Okay, Scott 600. What I've been doing, it's had a really good clean, as you can see. Um, we've got oil in the tank, we've got fuel in the tank. There's one thing we need to do. We need to make sure that the oil pump, the Pilgrim pump, which is down here, is delivering the oil into the engine properly. Now, there's something we need to do. We haven't done it yet. We've had the transfer ports off. We checked all inside there, and the drain down cocks have been checked and the oil that was in the bottom drained off. But what we need to do on each side of this engine, this side with the pump has a window behind, like a round disc. Now this side, you need to remove it. There's two clamps, one there and one here. So we need to undo the pump, the unions, and we withdraw that. Now inside this engine on both sides, there's the oiling to the main bearing. Now the oil is delivered in such a way that it's like a window on, on a certain um, rotation of the engine, of the crankshaft, it exposes the oil hole. And that delivers oil to the bearing and also atomizes in the crankcase. We've got to make sure that that is working properly. If we just purge the pump, well I mean purge the pump, fill the sight glass up with oil and make sure we've got a delivery of oil, we still don't know whether it's actually squirting out into the crankcase. So we don't want to seize anything up. So precautionary, take both windows off. Now on the other side, uh, the plate, the window is held in with this one bar, central bar. Now I've slackened over the spanner. I've just get it out of the way. Now you see here, I've got the central bit here. It's like a symbol really. There is no way of pulling this off. Now we can try in a moment with pliers. You can't leave her in here because you can't get in there really. There's a good chance it's been glued in place, which is not really necessary. But we need to break that seal to open this up. Now, one trick you can do, put some oil in the head, in the plug hole, and put the spark plug back in, and we kick it over, because it's got the transfer ports back in, so there's gonna be no air leak. So if we kick it over, there should be enough pressure in the crankcase hopefully to dislodge it. If there isn't, we might have to drill a hole in the centre and put a self-tapping screw in there and pull it away. But that is the extreme, but that has to come off and we can then can see what's going on inside and can see the oiling system. Right, we're gonna give it a kick over, quite a forceful kick over. If we can kick it over quite quickly, there's a good chance that the pressure in the crankcase will move the plate away from its seal and we can just lever it off. Just going to show you how the pump works. Now the drive is taken from the crank assembly. We've got a cutaway here that has to engage. If you look up inside here, we've got a peg that engages with the slot and it rotates it. In here we can see we've got an oil level here. Now I've been told that this collects here, there's probably a surplus amount of oil here and it's taken through the bearing at a particular time on the cycle. So what we do is take both plugs out and we'll turn this engine over in gear and we'll see what's happening. We should be able to see a bit more what's going on at the moment. That's it. Right, now if we turn this over and the camera looks in the, in the crankcase, now if you rotate this, it should be a squirt of oil comes through the crank. I think this is how it works. In here, we're looking, we've got a lot of oil at the moment. We're gonna mop up some of this oil, but there should be a point when this crank turns round 
that it exposes a port and the oil will come out. Everything on a Scott is very heavily oiled. All the bearings in the crankcase, it runs not on a, a conventional two-stroke oil, it runs on a straight 40 engine oil because it is lubricating the bearings. I mean, this is 1937. There wasn't such thing as like synthetic oils. People used to run things on straight 30s and 40 oils in the time, at that time. What we've done is removed the uh, drain plug from this side of the crankcase. So There's two crankcases because it's like two separate engines really. And you'll see in the centre there the trough now is empty. So we're just going to make sure there's no debris in the bottom. We'll squirt some stuff in there and blow it out with the airline. We know it's completely clear then. We need to do it on both sides. Another good reason for taking the windows off, not just to make sure that it's oiling properly as we turn the crank, but because there's a trough of oil in there, the trough is full of debris. Um, we'd let your camera get in a moment, but there's a lot of contaminants in here. It's like this. And you can see here, look, it's old oil. It's quite black, it's a bit gritty. So what we'll do now, we'll chase it out with some WD-40. Okay, so we're going to put this window back on the left-hand side of the crankcase. Because the gasket has been disturbed, we just need to put a little bit of well seal around here. Not too much. And the hole that we made, and we put a self-tapper in to pull the, the window off. We're going to leave that hole there, but we'll put some silicone in there. It just means if it has to be removed another time, the hole's already there for a self-tapping screw. Okay, what we need to do now before we put this pump on this side is just charge up both the oil lines for the left hand and the right hand side with oil. Just make sure they haven't got any air in that system so it's back filled as far as possible. First thing, make sure you've got the oil on. Now what we've done with the Pilgrim pump, we primed it, which means we filled underneath the sight glass to the top with oil. We have turned it over in gear to make sure we get a delivery of oil into the sight glass. It has a bit of air in there at the moment, so that's why we filled it with oil. That should increase in, in droplets and uh, without the air. Uh, we can regulate it on this thumb screw here on both sides. When it's running properly, it wants between 15 and 15 and 20 drops per minute. But um, it's gonna be very smoky at first, that'd be fine. We'd rather it be smoky and things be okay. All right, so oil on. Fuel on, give it a good tickle. Let's 
Okay, give it a choke. The advanced and retired levers actually normally on these sidecar extensions, so we're going to give that about halfway, I think. So I'm not sure which way it works, either tight wire or slack wire. Tickle it a bit more. Got a bit of a drip of petrol out of there. I think we'll just make sure, see so if we've got a wet plug, might be the first thing to do. We'll just take it off choke, just try that. Getting puffed. I think what we'll do, I've got a set of rollers. I'm getting quite worn out. We'll spin it up on the rollers and see what happens. I think we'll whip the plugs out, try the plugs and try it again. Because we've got one plug firing but not the other one. Okay, we've had a few issues with the Scott today, as you probably know. Um, the biggest problem has been the oiling. We had to take out the windows, and these oil wells are called glands, were filled up with oil. You need a certain amount in there, but we got rather too much in the crankcase, and it was coming up, mixing with the fuel, and hence why it was so smoky. We've got it running, but on choke, 
off choke it was dying away so I've now altered the needle position. I've raised the needle. So we're going to do another start up now. This bike has got to have a, a bit more work done to it. It's just really getting it going so people could actually hear it, certainly see it with the smoke. So we're doing another start up now and uh, we'll just see if it's any better. That didn't sound very good, did it? No. Ooh. 